Hello everyone, once again your favorite YouTube engineer. Today we're gonna be making an equ equivalent to this uh, Yardstick 1 tool. This tool actually allows to do everything what uh, the chip CC1101 can do. So you have it described here. So you can sniff packets, you can replay them, so you can perform reply attacks, you can jump particular channel from these frequency ranges, right? And normally I would encourage you to buy this device, um, yeah. However, however, it costs one hundred of dollars, man. So those guys, they are ripping you off. And I will show you today how to build a similar device to this one and even simpler to use with only Arduino Pro Micro board, so you need to buy these boards. So keep in mind, it has to be 3.3 volts and 8 megahertz. That's very important. This is because the CC1101 board, this one, there's a variety of those boards, but you can pick whatever you want, whatever suits you. This particular board operates on 3.3 volt, and if you put 5 volts, it will fry, right? Okay, normally to use uh, to use Yardstick One, you would need uh, to upload some bootloader and stuff. You need to put some script in Python, whatever. And I have made it so simple that even a kid can do it, right? And I will show you in a second. Here we have this bot bought directly from China and it's a clone of the original Spark One Arduino Pro Micro bot. It has an 8 MHz uh, crystal, the clock. It has Atmega 32U4 chip. It has a voltage regulator for 3.3 volts, so keep in mind that it has to be 3.3 marking here and 8 here. So don't buy anything else. And you need to, of course, have a USB, micro USB cable to be able to connect to the PC, right? And uh, you need eight color cables to interconnect. We have eight cables. And you need this CC1101 board. So it can be whatever you find, right? They are all the same. All the same. So, buy the one that suits you best. On the CC1101 you have the marking that will help you to build the device. You need to connect particular cables to, to appropriate pins. So, there will be information about this uh, later in the video. And the best would be if you could have a uh, here normal antenna so you can buy these bots with uh, better antennas so i would suggest to look for a better board this one is the cheapest i think it costs something like two dollars right this device arduino pro micro it's uh, eight dollars so you can fit within ten dollars man not 100. okay let's uh, go to the pc to see how it is built and here it is the CC1101 tool. Go to my GitHub page, github.com slash mcore1976 slash CC1101 dash tool. And here you have all the details. Let's start from the diagram. As you can see on the diagram, there's only eight cables to be connected. Please ensure that you have a correct board. So the one that has a 3.3, this one, voltage regulator, and eight megahertz crystal. That's very important. Another thing is, please go carefully through this tutorial that describes the Arduino configuration. So, learn.sparkfun.com slash tutorials slash promicro fio hookup guide. Especially when it comes to the Windows drivers installation and configuration of the Arduino environment. It is all described here. Please don't ask me such questions how to do it because I will also send you the same link. So please go through this 
before you start any other activities, especially when it comes to this, to the configuration of Arduino. For example, in Arduino you have to do preferences, you have to copy this, you have to select proper board, for example, you have to check if it's SparkFun Pro Micro and if it's the one, 3.38 MHz, and then you are ready to go. When looking at the source code, there's a plenty of settings here that you can customize, but if you want to this board, the CC1101, to start with particular settings on the beginning, I would encourage you to put some values here. This is set to, for example, to the frequency 433.92 as a default. You can change whatever you wish here, just make it the way you want, right? Okay, and now let's see how it works. And you, first you need to check what is the serial port number, the virtual serial port number that was assigned to your board when connected over USB. So in my case, I have two boards. So first one is on COM3, second is on COM4. And you have to use some uh, serial port terminal. I will be using PuTTY. PuTTY on port three, let's go. As you can see, the board is operational, the device is operational, and now let's connect to the second board. Okay, we have two boards available. First, I would encourage you to put the command help that will show you all available commands. So you have all these commands to set up the CC1101 board, like modulation, um, frequency, deviation, channel number, bandwidth data rate, it is important. If you want to record and replay, you have to align it, uh, this value with the board that you, with, with the frame that you want to capture. The synchronization mode, it is a preamble, uh, check and so on. You have to align all these details with the, with the signal that you want to record and replay. I would encourage you to use Universal Radio Hacker tool to find out, to research on these frames. Uh, if you want to, for example, replay a car keys, you need to first use Universal Radio Hacker to find out what is the modulation frequency and all the details of the frames that you want to record and replay, right? Of course, there are some some other commands like uh, receive packets and transmit packets many times the same frame. Jam, so Jammer is been to, you can record, uh, record the packets and store them into the buffer. You can show the buffer content, you can replay the packets. Now let's start from something simple, uh, like, um, I don't know, maybe we should receive some, some frames. Rx1 means receiving is enabled, and on the second board I will transmit something. Tx dot, uh, space one means that I will send one copy of the frame, and the frame would be like this. These are the hex values. A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D, E, E, F, F, okay? You can see the pilot was received, so the frame was received. Now let's try to record something. Record. Of course, you can see all of this data if they are coming through the radio on the on my RTL SDR and SDR Sharp application on the back. Let's now enable recording and I will try to send some packets for recording and just show you how it works. TX1 and I will send the same frame. Okay, now I will send another frame. So there will be two. Oh, you saw that the packet was was sent, it, it appeared for a second here. Now you can also see it was sent. Now the first frame, the third frame, one copy of this frame. Let it, let's make it uh, shorter, maybe like this. Okay, and the fourth frame. One copy of the fourth frame, let's make it bigger. Okay. I have sent four frames, so you can see these frames coming up here. Now, let's stop recording. Now let's display the content of the buffer. You have four frames, right? And we can replay them. So let's enable recording here. Not recording, but receiving RX1. 
and let's play the frame number that might be this one ah uh, yeah not, not like this you need to put the number <laughs> like two okay sometimes it doesn't switch to the receiving mode or maybe there's a problem with the radio settings it's worth to send some frame and then like this and then enable uh, receiving mode again don't ask me why it is like this it's uh, i think it is um it's a it's a matter of the library that i'm using let's send play to you can see the frame was received we can send uh, all of the flames play zero means replay all the frames that are, that were previously stored in the buffer sometimes uh, my my board actually the my cc1101 board is not perfect sometimes it catches some some errors that is why it sends some i would say bad frames here ah yeah i have crc disabled right you can enable crc but anyway all these commands are available in the help you can play with them let's now see how the jammer works right let's disable recording let's disable and now let's let's set up the jumper so i will use only single board i will switch off the second one let's jump the frequency let's jump this frequency let's set the frequency first like this and not now let's enable jamming jump one you can see that the jammer works Yeah, you can even hear it but this is not the perfect way of jamming you can set a different modulation like uh, set what was the command let me check because i don't set modulation what were the values let's set a gfsk okay set module yeah modulation to one gfsk it is better right so you can play with this you can play with this and uh, let me change so just to show you that we can jump any frequency let's change the frequency now set megahertz like 315 so the us frequency for the car keys right i have switched to 315 let's now switch the fdr sharp to this frequency and you have this jammer working here okay i should enable am right so i hope you will like this tool please don't use it in the bad purpose and if you have some suggestions what to add uh, what to change just drop me an email or leave a comment on the, under this video i hope you enjoyed this video please leave a like and subscribe my channel thank you very much bye bye